celebrate the power of giving and discover who is making a difference, what's working in the world of fundraising and philanthropy, and how you, too, can learn to do it firsthand from those in the know. I am Fauna Hodel. Welcome to the Amazing Women of Power Talk Radio. Oh, my goodness. Today, I have... Mimi McAbee. Mimi is the reason that I'm in the world of philanthropy. Mimi, when I first met her, oh my goodness, Celebrity Society Magazine, a magazine that is now 42 years old, and I want from Mimi herself, I'm not even going to say another word because there's (laughs) no one that communicates what that magazine stands for and how she got involved in the world of philanthropy. My hero, Mimi Maccabee, welcome. Thank you. And, of course, you know how I feel about you, but I think the world needs to know you're, you are my guardian angel. And thank you for switching the tables on me and um, giving me the honor of being interviewed by you. <laughs> <laughs> this is truly a, a blessing. So, Mimi. Yes. And Tell us your. Tell us first of all how you got involved with this Beverly Hills magazine. Well, originally um, I had actually attended a um, a charity function myself a few years back, um, very well known here in Los Angeles called the Salians. And I remember our picture was taken that evening, um, and I was so curious to know where, which publication it was going to end up in. And someone said it's a very high society philanthropic magazine followed by everyone in the community um, called Celebrity Society. And I was just amazed because I hadn't heard of such a publication um, and to know that it existed and it played such a big part in the philanthropic world. It got my curiosity running and, um, of course, I just wanted a copy and to learn more about it. And um, and I was so excited to be a part of that magazine at, 10 years back. And, you know, and, and I thought that would have been it. And later in life, I, I decided to become a journalist myself. And um, through the course of time, I was blessed to come across um, the publishers at the time, Ada Leonard Sands, who uh, had taken over the magazine from the original founders who had unfortunately passed on, Ed and Chevy Foster, um, in around about 2003, I believe. And they had taken the magazine um, over really because it was such an integral part of the community for so many years, since 1970, and they wanted to carry that legacy that Ed and Chevy Foster had started to really celebrate the spirit of philanthropy and giving back and celebrate the, our community all over the world, you know, whether it be in Hollywood or real estate or, you know, medicine, just amazing people who are giving back. and. I was fortunate to have been found uh, through that time, and Ada Leonard uh, came to me and said, "This is our make this your baby, you know, see what you can do with it, you know." Um, and that was where my dreams came true, and I I started as a journalist. I I I, I took the magazine that originally was just mostly pictures of all the great charity events and board members and write-ups about what the charities were doing and how people could get involved and how much money was raised. And as a journalist, I realized, you know, it's such a great um, uh, source, this magazine, for philanthropy and to get people involved. Why not add more editorial to it and inspire people from all different industries to get involved and hear people's stories and be the real voice of charities? Um, So I took it upon myself to really expand it and make it into more of a magazine rather than just all about the pictures and the wonderful people which will always be celebrated. Um, But I thought it it could be added some depth to to it so that people really could take from from each page, you know, an inspiration to get involved with a different cause and hear what's going on, you know, with the different charities locally, internationally. And soon before I knew it, you know, Celebrity Society became this beautiful, glossy magazine that people were following, um, you know, from all walks of life and looking forward to receiving their next, you know, copy. 
and I was just so proud to be a part of it. And I have to say, uh, it's just been a blessing. You know, sometimes I used to wake up thinking, this is actually my job. I, I get, you know, to I have the privilege of meeting some of the most incredible people, um, hearing their stories. And as you know, everyone has a story. But to hear how people got started and the challenges they had to go through and what has inspired them to get to where they are and how they've used their success to give back, I, it's just been a huge blessing for me. And I know one of the people that you interviewed, and you've interviewed people from all walks of life. Mm-hmm. You interviewed Elizabeth Taylor. Oh my yes, God! How yes, yes. That? that was obviously uh, an interview of a lifetime for me, and um, it just—it was incredible. You know, as I went through our archives, as you had seen yourself, we noticed. You know, I saw Dame Elizabeth Taylor had graced so many covers throughout the years. Um, way before I had been involved with the magazine. So I knew when I did um, a nostalgia issue, I definitely wanted to choose someone who, you know, stood for everything our magazine had represented through the years and someone we should celebrate in the philanthropic world. So she was the one I had chosen, and it was it really was incredible because I not only was blessed to have that opportunity to interview her, but from what I know, it was it possibly is one of her last interviews and I I couldn't have been more, you know, honored and humbled to know that and to be have given that opportunity especially um during one of the toughest times of her life with all her health issues but she was so courteous to give me that time and I will forever be grateful. And I know you've interviewed Madonna just to <laughs> tell us about that and then I want you to share about you and your family and how you got involved early on in the whole philanthropic world, what led you to where you are now? Absolutely. Well, as far as celebrities, you know, I've, we've had the blessing of getting some incredible interviews. Um, but I, I, as, as, as you know, my famous quote is, a celebrity is, you know, so, you know, someone who's a humanitarian, someone who should be celebrated. So whether it's in Hollywood or a 10-year-old child, you know, raising money with a lemonade stand for, for cancer, those are our celebrities. So, um, you know, whether it's Madonna, Diana Ross, you name it, I, I have really been blessed to have, you know, gotten some great interviews with people and, from, as I said, from all walks of life, um, you know, John Anderson, the head of Topa Financial, one of the most powerful people in California, I can say he was he gave an interview to Celebrity Society, again, maybe one and only interview he's given, very private man. Um, so I really, really have been blessed to have been able to meet, not only meet and interview these people and share their stories and inspire others to get involved. Um, so the list goes on, and I can't say there was ever a favorite. You know, there are some that I've had the blessing of actually having a friendship beyond the interview so that have remained in my life. And a few is like Fred Heyman, who is a dear, dear man in my life, who is also, um, you know, as everyone knows, the father of Beverly Hills. Uh, um, there's a few that I share, you know, that hold a very special place in my heart. And I have been lucky to have, you know, the magazine bring them into my life. But their their beautiful spirit has always kept them with me. And I and I will always, you know, carry that on as years go on and hopefully meet more and more incredible people like them. So you grew up with givers, though. You grew up in that world of your family. Yes, I have to say, I think, you know, everything does happen for a reason. You know, when I, as a child, I knew I wanted to, you know, I was a talker, as you could tell. I have no problem talking. I love talking. I love meeting people. I knew um, I had a calling in, you know, journalism, and with that, I also knew um, I, I wanted to use my voice not just to, you know, write about anything or fluff. I wanted to make a difference in whatever way I could. And as a child, I was raised in a family, um, traditional but also not um, typical. You know, uh, I was raised with, uh, we, I'm a child of the revolution of Iran, so I left eight months old family was separated. I was separated from my dad, but I was raised with my uncle, my my mom's family, and I was so fortunate to know, you know, the values of being taught, you know, what 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 family means, what giving means, what love means, and and really just having compassion and being generous. Those were everything that every day we were taught at home and 
and it almost sounds like a cliche, but it's so true. You know, um, I was raised in a way that we would have to somehow, you know, we were taught by example. You know, I can't even explain it any better. You know, from my uncle, from my mom, my grandparents, there wouldn't be a day we wouldn't come home and we wouldn't hear a story about, you know, how they helped someone or they gave something or they did something. And that just seemed normal to us. And as I got older, I realized I would be put in situations where I could have easily walked away, not gotten involved, whether it be a stranger, a friend, family, relative. But it almost became just like natural for me or for my siblings to always somehow give, you know, whether it be someone you just re meet, you know, in the hospital, you're passing by, they don't speak the language, you know, here, you can maybe assist them in any way that you can. It could be someone who needs help, you know, crossing the street and no one else is helping them. It could be the smallest things, but I realize how valuable that is for somebody else and how little you're giving and what a huge difference you could be making. So as I got grow old, I grew older, I realized, you know what, there's no excuse for anyone, for anyone not to be able to give. And it doesn't necessarily mean financially. There's so many ways people can give. And I was raised in that, and I know not everyone has that blessing to be raised in a family that actually teaches those values. But I think even if it's not something you're around, as a human, it is our responsibility. I think everyone has a heart, as far as I know. <laughs> And with that is a responsibility to actually care and give and be compassionate towards others. And I really, really feel strongly about people not being as selfish, especially during challenging times like this. I think it is our responsibility as humans in a society that we share together to help one another and be there for one another. And I think it's just, you know, um, imperative that we inspire people to get up and make a difference, small or big. It's making a difference and doing something positive. So, having worked with you side by side for, gosh, it feels. It's, <laughs> I think this is the fourth year now. Yes. And in my entire life, I never worked with anyone more passionate. You're. Every every act was a word, a, a part of your consciousness of how could you use your life for good? How could you tell more stories? How could you, you know, fill the magazine up with people from all walks of life who are the givers? And what an honor! Like, Thank, well, you know, I I've had the the pleasure of having you right next to me and sharing, you know, all these great times together. And, you know, you've been a big source of my inspiration through the years, and I will always be grateful for you. And there are people exactly like yourself, Anna, who come into your life and you realize how amazing they are just by simply being themselves and having the incredible heart that you have that so many people can learn from and, and, and just take a lot from, you know, just sitting next to you in the office, I would, you know, hear your stories and see how you're giving back in in any way you can, whether it's connecting people or, or, or you know, helping out with a friend, taking them here. It's just, it's that's what we all need to be doing, and I think people make excuses for it, but we all could make a difference, and maybe it does start with surrounding yourself with positive people. And we do need to be inspired every now and then. And, you know, what better than great group of friends and colleagues and, and peers to be around to really motivate one another and say, let's, let's do something. There's no more excuses.